We have some wild Toronto Raptor contract updates to discuss as one player that's been training with the organization for this entire summer may have potentially been doing it for free. So we'll discuss that as well as Bobby Webster potentially getting a promotion and Scotty Barnes out here cooking up some summertime basketball. So lots of stuff to break down without further ado. Let's jump to the first topic of discussion. The first thing we're taking a look at is some wild Raptors contract updates. Now, the Raptors were kind of promised a wild summer. You know, people were saying, don't put your phone down, phones down when it comes to Raptors moves. And whilst there were certainly some shakeups, I mean, a new head coach, Fred Van Vliet, ended up going to the Houston Rockets for definitely the wildest contract of the summer, making $40 plus million per year. The Raptors did fill out the rest of their bench with some minor moves, and one of the contracts is a little bit surprising. As we heard the other day that Jeff Downey Jr. was coming back to the team, it was made official. You know, he's coming up back for at least training camp. And then Shams of the Athletic basically said that he's coming back with a significant guarantee if he does making the end up making the roster. So that's sort of what the Raptors had planned for Jeff Downton Jr. However, nothing's guaranteed as a... Uh, Basically, we had a report come out from Blake Murphy come out and say that Jeff Downton Jr.'s contract with the Toronto Raptors contains a $0 guarantee per a source, but it becomes guaranteed for $900,000 come October 21st if he does end up making this Raptors squad. So I was fairly shocked to see that because players that are sort of well, he's a fringe player at this point. We don't know for sure if he's going to make the final roster. He's got an invite to training camp. He was a two-way guy last season. There's no other two-way spots left to fill on the roster for this upcoming year. So Jeff Dowden Jr. is going to be fighting his heart out out there in training camp in order to make that roster and make that $900,000. But as we've seen, we've seen the workout videos. We've seen him around the Toronto Raptors team. He's been in the gym with this Raptors organization. If he doesn't end up making the squad, not only is he out a roster spot, he's out that sort of summer of money where he probably could have slipped into another team's two-way contract position, could have got a summer league check, could have got a lot of things done. So I found that pretty wild because we knew that it was an unguaranteed deal and Shams had a significant sort of salary guarantee if he ends up making the roster. I guess 900000 is fairly significant. Might be worth it when compared to the two-way so sort of salary contract. I mean, you look at the rest of it here. Basically, if he does make the team about halfway through the season, you know, uh, that gets he basically gets 2.2 million or 2.02 million dollars on his contract. So his details, uh, then the deals will fully guarantee uh, on January 10th. So that's the deals of Jet Down Junior's contract. But in comparison, the two-way players end up making 560,000 if they stay on the roster this entire year. So Marquise Noel has a $75,000 guarantee. Ron Harper Jr. is in the same boat, $75,000 and 280k if he does end up making the team. And then Freeman Liberty has a 75k guarantee, and then 200 if he does end up making the roster so some will get light protection some light protection on those guys so the two-way players you know it's less advantageous less upside in terms of uh what type of money they're able to earn i mean you know, to the average person the difference between two hundred thousand dollars like you look at nba contracts and you're like oh fred van vliet's making 40 million dollars what's the difference between 75k and the 900k i mean for the average person that's over like 10 years of work so you know, it's a uh, it's pretty interesting to see Jeff Downton Jr. take a little risk like that, not get the guaranteed sure thing, you know, the sure bag up front. So found that pretty wild just looking at the sort of deals and how the discrepancy sort of happens for these lower end of the roster, definitely not lower tier players. I mean, everyone in the NBA is fantastic. We've even seen Jeff Downton Jr. have his moments. Marquise Noel tore up Summer League. Ron Harper Jr. has his game going. But it's really interesting to see the business side of the players that aren't necessarily making hundreds of millions of dollars every season so interesting stuff there maybe Saudi Arabia will call I you know for people that don't know they offered Mbappe I think a 750 million dollar contract or something along those lines for just one year so we'll see if NBA players end up getting that bag soon but let me know what you guys think about these uh, Raptors contract updates but the next thing we're going to discuss is something I've seen a few Raptors fans get a little fired up about it's Bobby Webster potentially getting a promotion or potentially you know getting a bigger role or with a new organization maybe the Raptors will have to up their price or something along these lines because Jake Fisher did a breakdown on sort of the landscape of front office sort of officials in the NBA and obviously Bob Myers who was a longtime GM of the Golden State Warriors sort of spearheaded this article and stuff but Bobby Webster did get a mention basically saying that Raptors GM Bobby Webster will continue to draw interest from rival teams while he serves as the Toronto Raptors number two behind President Masai Ujiri. Webster's 
spent several years in the league's office and where he counseled 30 teams on navigating the NBA's complicated salary. So Bobby Webster, again, was a big part of end up acquiring Kawhi, was here through all the high times. And people have been criticizing Bobby since he's not... Jake Fisher calls him the number two. Bobby Webster is the general manager of the Toronto Raptors. That's generally the top seat you sort of fill when you're uh, in a, in the role of a Bobby Webster, right? GMs generally make the front office decisions, you know, the roster moves, all that type of stuff. And sometimes there's a president of basketball operations that's very hands-on. Masai Jerry, formerly the GM of the Toronto Raptors, moved up to president and... I guess there is that 1A, 1B sort of option, that hierarchy still there, but Bobby Webster is in a very prestigious role within the Raptors organization. It's not like he's assistant GM or scout or something along those lines, cap navigator like he was for the other 30 NBA teams. And Bobby Webster is a young front office executive and has done a lot of great things. And sure, he's definitely been criticized and the front office of the Toronto Raptors should be criticized for how they've handled certain situations over the past couple years. But overall, the tenure of these guys, they've done a lot more things positively for the Raptors organization than negatively. And we've heard the talk a week ago or so that Bisayu Jerry's job isn't as secure as it once was, partly because of this performance stuff and partly due to ownership shakeups and ownership changeups. Edward Rogers has discussed, basically, you know, when Messiah Jerry's contract was up a couple seasons ago, that, hey, why don't we just move Bobby Webster into the head chair, you know, whether you give him a different role or not, but let him handle the roster decisions and not pay Messiah Jerry. You know, if other executives are out there or other organizations are looking to poach Bobby Webster away from the Toronto Raptors, you know, the 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 phone bills don't end up going up. Bell and Rogers don't want to cash out those checks from Masai Ujiri and stuff. You know, maybe he gets a promotion with us and they end up letting him go. You know, that competition. There's all these pieces, all this front office, you know, politics that you gotta sort of deal with and madness, especially when it comes to two conglomerates in the in Canada, you know, Bell and Rogers with their insane phone bills out here, not willing to pay. Trying to be cheap with uh, our Toronto Raptors. We've only played the luxury tax once, I believe, in the past decade or so. So even though we've had some great teams. But let me know what you guys think about Bobby Webster being, you know, looked at, you know, gaining some eyes across the NBA. Do you think he'll end up, do you think he would be a good just front office chair, you know, lead guy in the Toronto Raptors uh, organization? Let me know what you guys think about all that. But the final thing we're discussing this video is Scotty Barnes putting in some work. And you know, we've seen some highlight films. We've seen the jump shot of Scotty Burns. Some people are saying it's looking smoother. A lot of people said that going into last season and didn't really look that much smoother after, you know, it definitely looked improved and maybe we just got used to it and stuff, but the numbers didn't increase to an extreme extent, you know, from his rookie to sophomore season. But Scotty Barnes out here putting in some work over the summer, playing in some pro-am action, getting some dunks. I'll throw his highlights out there on the screen right now. But this is a big summer. This is a big off-season for Scotty Barnes to come out, put in some work. You see that jump shot there? You know, it looks fairly smooth. Again, he didn't have a horrible-looking jump shot. You know, his rookie second-year season, but you could definitely adjust the mechanics, get things uh, looking more fluid. So his footwork seems to be solid there. Scotty's doing his patented sort of post hook drives, making some passes, playing some defense. You know, it's the stuff we want to see from Scotty Barnes. Again, it's just a sort of a pro-am game. Got to get excited late in these videos when we see a little bit of basketball action. But Scotty Barnes is obviously going to be a dude that the Raptors need to take a major step next season. Fred Van Vliet gone, you know, the Raptors posted the some highlights of Scotty or a picture with Scotty saying, you know, this man's a guard, or I forget the direct quote. I should have screenshotted that through all that little video, but it seems like Scotty Barnes is going to have more of an on-ball role going into next season, and hopefully... It ends up working out with Fred Van Vliet gone. If not, we do have uh, Dennis Sh Dennis Schroeder who can come out, play the point guard position. Marquise Noel, Jeff Downton Jr. Lots of guys that are going to be Malachi Flynn. Lots of guys who are going to be hungry for opportunities. But let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors news. You guys are the best to make it as far. Subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. Anyways, I'm signing out. Cheers.